Welcome to Strategic News International. I am Amitabh Revi. Joining me today is SNI editor Surya Gangadharan. We are looking at uh, US NSA John Bolton sacking by President Trump and its implications. First, the manner in which it was done, Surya. We've come to know President Trump even conducting big foreign policy initiatives through Twitter. But uh, is this how it should be done? So, well, obviously you can always disagree with the manner in which it was done. But uh, Trump does everything to affect, you know. And I think the differences with Bolton had got to a point where he needed to show who was boss. And uh, uh, perhaps in public also, there was a need for Trump to demonstrate that he was the guy in charge. And uh, I mean, it, it's a little uh, nasty, you could say, uh, the manner in which he was removed. He could have just accepted his resignation and let it go at that. But um, uh, Trump is not that kind of guy, you know, and uh, I think he needed to make a point in public and he did so. When you talk about disagreements, and we know there were many of them on the international front between the two, but isn't it also part of public policy or should it be that you have people who also disagree so that you can come to a, 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 decision, a strategic decision? Not necessarily everybody has to have the same instinct or decision-making thought process that President Trump has. I think uh, President Obama had that kind of uh, uh, cabinet, you know, where he had uh, a number of opinions coming to him. And he would take his time to distill and figure out exactly what he wanted. So it may not have contributed to quick decision-making uh, or even timely decision-making, but it, it, was, it represented whatever action he carried out represented the general sense of his uh, government. Uh, I think in that case, uh, Trump is a little different, you know. And if you don't agree, then well, uh, you know, <laughs> you're out of favor. And I think in the case of Bolton, the disagreements had been mounting. Uh, as you're aware, um, Bolton wanted to go all out and carry out airstrikes on Iran, which Trump had stopped at the last minute. Um, and again, there were disagreements over Russia because um, uh, Trump wanted to build some kind of a relationship with Russia, end the sanctions, uh, get talking again with them and uh, thereby build a, a concert against China, which he sees as a long-term threat to the U.S. Uh, supremacy. But Bolton wanted to, uh, was looking in other directions at the fact that uh, Russia was profile in uh, the West Asia was rising, especially Syria. And uh, he saw a threat over there. And uh, given his neocon sensibilities and his involvement in the Iraq uh, invasion, uh, I think he had his own point to make. So I think the disagreements were mounting. Um, they, they were, um, uh, it was coming to a head. And uh, Trump may have decided that it's time to get rid of him. If you take those disagreements and uh, where we go forward in terms of country-wise, now Iran itself is coming just before the UNGA uh, assembly where there's a strong possibility or indications that Rouhani and Trump might yeah. meet on the sidelines. So was that also a, a key factor that he wouldn't, Trump wouldn't have wanted Bolton to be around uh, because he was opposing it so vehemently? Well, if you look back, he's uh, kept Trump at a distance at key points, you know. And uh, although uh, Trump uh, precipitates matters uh, diplomatically, he doesn't go over the edge. You've seen that with the North Koreans, with the Iranians. Uh, so I think when he talked of a meeting with Rouhani at the UNGA, uh, that would have upset a lot of people, not just Bolton, uh, within the system. But um, Trump is uh, basically prides himself on being a deal maker. Uh, he doesn't want to fight and he sees no purpose in fighting, especially in place with Iran and all that. All he wanted was War something. is a last resort for him. Absolutely. His, it will not even be a last resort. True. Because he's a businessman at the end of the day. So perhaps he saw uh, opportunity to um, you know, he spent the last two years building um, his uh, image within his constituency with fairly hardline talk and rhetoric, you know. Now perhaps the time has come to, you know, do something to show that he's the statesman and uh, win the election next year. So uh, perhaps this was part of that, you know, um, reach out and Bolton was the um, kebab haddi, if you want to call it that. But if you look at the people who welcomed it, the Iranians have welcomed it. The North Koreans have welcomed it because he was, that is, Bolton was a bogeyman for both of them. Absolutely. He Very was, publicly, they were denounced. Absolutely. He was a hardliner. <laughs> and um, his uh, views um, were perhaps out of tune with what uh, Trump's own thinking was. I mean, at the end, end of the day, I think we should give credit to Trump. Uh, 
he he is not an idiot um he is a businessman he knows uh, understands some idea of has some idea of strategy and um, where to go forward his instincts in that sense would have told him that this thing with iran is a you know you can't win it and it's better to deal do a deal with them and settle your issues and then get the, get the hell out of there and as you are aware he has indicated he wants to get out of syria too uh, he doesn't see these areas as very important to the us anymore since the us has already passed um, saudi arabia as the biggest oil producer so in that sense uh, perhaps us interests have come down and he wants to concentrate domestically and build his uh, constituency there so in that sense uh, trump was a stumbling block he had to be removed bolton bolton sorry so again now another stumbling block was on, on afghanistan because john bolton was completely against any kind of deal with the, the afghans and we saw what happened the plans Uh, that uh, camp david a meeting was going to happen there though of course for now there's a pause if not a break yeah. in those talks so that's another area where there was disagreement between the two i think there was a lot of disquiet within the administration at the pace with which uh, trump was pushing forward the peace talks with the taliban even though there was no cessation of violence on their side the death toll was going up practically every week um and uh, then suddenly out of the blue he says um, one of our brave soldiers has been killed and therefore the talks are off so clearly there was something that was not working there perhaps somewhere down the line uh, trump was able to be convinced perhaps by sections within his own i think that this was a no go no you should not go down this road uh, it would affect the image of the us possibly it could affect him further down the line during elections and uh, ideally it would be better to wait a while uh, figure out which way to go forward and in that sense perhaps bolton's instincts were right it may not have gone down well with trump to be told by bolton that he was wrong you know he, uh, trump doesn't like that either but it would have uh, it would have been a negative against bolton another arrow to bring him down with what about uh, china the, the issue of president trump and the trade war with china and other uh, disquiet between the two nations and how does india fit into this is there, is there any implication for uh, bolton going from the security establishment in the us for us i think the um, i would like let's look at the first part of yeah. it the uh, china factor um trump wanted an equation with the russians in sanctions uh, get them on the, his side so that he could build a broader front against china because he sees china as the threat to the us long term you know and in that sense the russians would be more manageable and um, bolton disagreed there because he saw russia as a threat to us interests in uh west asia um maybe bolton was a bit out of sync with uh, the current realities given that the us is now the major oil producer in the world but um, that was one uh, issue there um and the trade war um, bolton may have had no problem with the trade war uh, against the chinese but um, trump again is uh, looking at a deal further down the line and um, we already know that they have struck some kind of an agreement on you know not going ahead with some tariff hikes so there is some light over there um how it's going to pan out we don't know as far as india is concerned um i think we are incidental you know <laughs> bolton never really saw us as uh, but it helped us that um he was a hardliner on afghanistan because um, it meant the trump has kept the pressure on the pakistanis uh and now thank god he has decided to you know stay the course in afghanistan for how long we don't know but as long as us troops remain there there is some um you know uh, guarantee for india that um, the us will stay committed uh, so in that sense he he was um uh, he never saw india as very uh, you know germane to us uh, plans but um, he was somebody we could perhaps work with uh, now that he's gone of course uh, we'll be looking to see who, who next uh, comes up and uh, that's where the big question mark is again so now this is the third nsa that trump has uh, gone through general flynn lasted less than a month i think 24 days general mcbasta and now bolton and fourth one in his first term itself uh, but uh, the nsa there is like the nsa in india it's a political appointee and doesn't necessarily need any senate or congressional uh, well, uh, hearings in, or in, confirmation in, i think in the us system they are all political appointees yeah. because the entire top level mm. of uh, administration goes Uh, but of course there are key appointments that are uh, have to be cleared by uh, the senate and those include secretary of state defense secretary and so on 
I think since the NSA is um, a more a newer post in that sense, uh, perhaps those kind of clearances were not required. Because uh, I don't see uh, if Bolton had to be cleared by the Senate, it may not have been an easy uh, process for him. <laughs> Even to get him on board in the first yeah. place. Which is interesting, why did uh, Trump actually get him on board? Yeah. I believe 2014, he had tweeted in praise of uh, John Bolton and also some reports from the White House suggesting that uh, he liked how uh, presentations were made on television by <laughs> John Bolton. So, if he was doing that for the administration's policies, maybe that's what he wanted from him, not advice on then maybe, <laughs> <laughs> so, then maybe he should have Bolton as some kind of a super... Uh, PR guy, you know, but even that wouldn't have gone down well ultimately with Trump, you know. It had to be him up there on TV. So, uh, anyway, Bolton's gone. Uh, we don't know who's going to come in his place. And um, the, uh, the incoherence in the Trump administration continues. Although all said and done, uh, I think Trump has been fairly good for India as far as a regional uh, situation is concerned. So, uh, fingers crossed and let's see what happens next. Sura Gangadhan, thanks so much for giving us our take on SNI. And you can, of course, subscribe to our YouTube channel and if you want notifications to get live notifications of when we actually premiere these videos, you just click on the bell button.